Hey Grant and Eric, it's Monday, April 7th. I got a good video actually planned out to this time to make up for last time. It's about Atlas Shrugged. I'm sure you guys have heard of this book. It is used as a tool in political debates today all the time. It's highly polarized whether or not people like it or hate it. And I want to remove all political polarizations about how it's about America or whatever. I just want to start as a normal book, just from scratch. So a little background on the book. Ayn Rand moved from communist Russia to capitalist America in search of free markets and freedom and bald eagles and everything American. The government in Ayn Rand's book Atlas Shrugged in this alternate universe America is getting too big. It's starting to pretty much dictate uh, what people do with their brains and that's a big problem of communism too. Uh, uh, creativity is it doesn't belong to you. If you have a good idea, it's a good idea for the state and you have to give it up to the state and the government and they will produce it and distribute it for you for the good of everybody. Um, kind of the philosophy of communism is from each according to his ability to each according to his need. This sounds all lovely and great because everybody sounds like, you know, they're producing everything they can and they're getting everything they need. What's wrong with that? Well, human nature is what's wrong with that. Um, in the book Atlas Shrugs, there's a company that decides to pay its wages with that philosophy. Um, so people that are really good at their job work a ton. They work overnight, overtime shift, but the thing is they don't get any extra pay. They just work because they're good at it. Their extra pay goes to people who can't work because they had a baby and need the money. So they end up starting to like hate people that have babies or get married because it means that their need goes up and that means that you know their wage goes down. It's just a messy thing and that's kind of what happens in real life communist societies. Um, that's why they're kind of no good. In her book Atlas Shrugged, it's very clear that Ayn Rand um, instead of communism, really values the most opposite of communism you could possibly be, the ultimate capitalist state. My personal favorite stand against communism in Atlas Shrugged is when a character is introduced who basically has devoted his entire life to erasing the legend of Robin Hood from society. I am not making this up. Let me read you a quote. It is said he fought against the looting rulers and returned the loot to those who had been robbed, but that is not the meaning of the legend which has survived. He is remembered not as a champion of poverty, but as a champion of need. Not as a defender of the raw, but as a provider of the poor. Uh, he is held to be the first man who assumed a halo of virtue by practicing charity with wealth which he did not own, by giving away goods which he had not produced, by making others pay for the luxury of his pity. He is the man who became the symbol of the idea that need, not achievement, is a source of rights, and that we don't have to produce, only to want, and that the earned does not belong to us, but the unearned does. Now you should have heard a lot of words in that uh, monologue that reminded you of that philosophy of communism, to each based on his need, from each based on his ability. Um, basically this is in the society that Ayn Rand has created. The government um, has pretty much made getting money and, and being proud of the money you've earned a vice. And everybody that's earning money is like, hey man, all I want to do is make money. I'm proud of my money. I've done a lot of hard work for it. So it's like a backwards thing. She says money is the symbol of virtue. It's a symbol of hard work and dedication to your job. And yet, being proud of your money and having a lot of money is a vice, is a negative character trait. And the Robin Hood analogy is really important because the government tries to make these people give away their fortunes to everybody and make it all equal and everyone's living in a happy place holding hands with the same amount of money. Um, the government tells this one dude, hey man, you're really good at producing steel, it's not fair. You need to stop producing steel at that rate and produce at the rate of the smallest steel company is able to produce at, so that way everyone gets an equal share of the market. Uh, basically, that's what she's trying to say was Robin Hood's fault and the fault with the government in America in her fake land, not the real America. Just keep that in mind, I'm not saying that about America, I'm not an objectivist at all. I think the idea though that money is a symbol of virtue and yet a vice in it within itself is really kind of true when you think about it. You never hear anybody say I'm proud of my money because if you say that you're a bad person but the people in Atlas Shrugged at least truly are respectable proud businessmen who've done an honest life's work who are condemned for the money they have by the government. And I totally understand that not all businessmen deserve to be proud of their money. There's probably some dishonest trade and under the table deals going on, definitely, and, and bribery in Washington. And there are characters in Atlas Shrugged that are high up businessmen that are like that, that represent those people that pay off Washington representatives and stuff like that. 
But the idea of the book basically is is that. It's that a free market should not have a huge government hand in it, which definitely should sound like something you heard about Republicans and conservatives. And that's why the Tea Party, which is an extremely conservative group, really likes this book. That's kind of my thoughts on Atlas Shrugged. It was kind of all over the place, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and have a broader understanding of what that book's all about. And I look forward to you guys' videos. Have a great week.